Hello everyone. Today I prepare my testimony after reading whole Genesis uh, with you in 2021. So my attachment to Jesus, the text is John chapter 15, verse 5 to 17. Okay. They are same trees, but they look different in different seasons. So what part is the most important? We cannot say that. To be summer, this time is necessary. And for fall, we needed a summer season. And to be the winter, we needed a fall. But the winter is also necessary for next spring. So every moment of um, these trees is necessary in their life cycle. So which season is most beautiful to you? Let's compare it. Let's compare it with our lives. Which moment is most beautiful in our lives? We do not know yet, but every moment is necessary for our next step. And this is the cycle of the life, like these trees. But I trust every moment is very beautiful and that every moment is necessary for the next step. My attachment to Jesus. Today, I want to share about that my core is in Jesus Christ. So as I stay in Jesus Christ, I want to share my responsibility. I found the three things. First is enduring, second is persevering, and third one is bearing fruits. In any situation, my core should stay in Jesus. And then as I stay in Jesus, I have to do three things, enduring, persevering, bearing fruits. Okay, today I prepare some curtain trips like this. Um, I apply the John chapter 15, verse five to my story. John chapter 15, verse five says that Jesus is the vine, right? And that we are his branches. Me and you, all of us, we are his branches. And then, uh, of course, I'm not good at in drawing as you expected, but I try to visualize my last years. Um, I I'm a missionary in the Philippines, as you know, and then by God's grace, I have ministered since 2006 uh, with many fruits. That was really God's grace. God allowed us to do many things in the Philippines as a missionary. So I, I'm really grateful for his grace. However, I fa uh, faced many struggles that pressed me down to hard endure. There are many things, but first of all, the COVID-19. All my family, except my eldest girl, were positive for COVID. And Pastor Gim was a critical case, so he was at risk of his death. He was... Uh, in the hospital more than 76 days. And he also did 14 days self-quarantine. As we struggle with the, the COVID-19, we I have a mission a responsibility as a missionary, as a mother. And then I also have to go through all instabilities. I have to move eight times for six months. Uh, and the last one is very said the family health issue. Pastor Gim was a sick after he uh, survived from COVID-19. And then my church members also. Whenever I heard that the church members are sick, it's really heartbroken because I cannot be with them there. So many, many things, all those things really press me down hard, very hard. So I thought it is too hard to endure. However, 
I want to say that my core was attached to Jesus. That's why I could overcome those things and do the testimony like this. My core was in Jesus. So I could endure, I could survive from COVID-19 and all emotional burdens. So God helped me go through all the struggle about the COVID-19. And then I could endure many challenges. I had many responsibilities and I have to struggle with the instabilities, but God made me endure all, not give up. And of course, I also experienced God's healing upon my family and of course the JMPC family. Though I in Korea, I prayed for them and then I experienced how God healed each of them. So I experienced God make me up again. You know how, why? That's because I, my core was attached to Jesus Christ. Jesus was in me and I was in him. That's why he hold me tightly to overcome all those downs and make me up again. So now my question, why God make me up again? That is because God want me love others more than before. We have to love others because God gave us the strength and energy to survive all other things and make us up again. So with that grace, we have to love others and support one another to overcome everybody's struggle. This is my testimony. Okay. This is what I experienced through and then uh, during 2000, uh, in 2020 to up to now. And that's why I apply this one in uh, my testimony. So my question is, the, what can I do when our environment press us down and make us think about giving up something? What can we do? I want to say my outward, outward responsibilities, first of all, is enduring. So I ask myself, what will Jesus want me to endure? When I was at crisis, I asked, what does God want me to do? What God wants me to endure? So what will Jesus want me to endure? Of course, God want me endure now. The those the crisis, uh, He want me endure that moment, and then everything that we love, stressful things. We could feel a lot of stress when we are at crisis, but God want Jesus want me endure everything stressful, and something very hard that we say that God Lord. It is too tough to endure it, but God wants us to endure those things. So if we face the crisis and many challenges and the hardship, we have to endure that moment. We have to endure everything that we love as stressful things and something very hard. We say, Lord, it is too tough to endure it. But God, she just wants us to endure those things. Jesus said that we bear much fruit when we abide in him. Jesus mentioned fruit, not the speed. The speed may vary, but all of us are growing and bear fruit if our core is attached to Jesus. So sometimes we feel that we are too slow or we feel like stop bearing fruits, but we have to endure our hardship and then we have to stay abide in him. Okay, then we will bear fruit. Um, when we read the Genesis, 
we see many Bible characters, life is not easy, but still good. Maybe most of us pray for a no worry life regarding our goal, study, jobs, health, money, relationship with others. However, is it possible to live no worry life because we are Christians? Or can we be well and resilient though we face hardship or conflicts? Which one is the real? Do you think we, 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 can, be, we can live without any worry because we are Christian? Or is it possible to be well and resilient even in our hardship and conflict? Let's think about Abraham. God promised to give Abraham to give him son, right? So God promised to give Isaac to Abraham and Sarah. However, when Abraham and Sarah got Isaac, God tested Abraham to offer Isaac as a burnt offering. So Abraham did it. What is the next? God said that no, Abraham, don't kill him. And he prepared another sacrifice for that. So God and Abraham, we can see that his life was not easy, but it is still good. How about Isaac? It is what I shared during uh, chapter 15, uh, 25 and 26, right? There are many ups and downs in Isaac's life, right? Though Isaac went through many struggles in his life, he was well, thanks to God. Amen? So many ups and downs, but he moved toward the good ways. How about Jacob? We can see a lot of grief and joy in Jacob's life because you can you imagine that how sad it is to lose your son. Jacob came to Goshen when he was 130 years old. It was during the famine, second year of the famine. But it, that was very, very hard and tough season. But that moment was the happiest moment in his life because he could meet Joseph and he stayed 17, day, 17 years in Goshen, right? So there was grief in Jacob's life, but God filled his last two years with joy. So we say that his life was tough, very hard, but it is still good. How about Joseph? Joseph was also a lot, a lot of ups and downs, right? However, he was finally goes up, right, in his life. So the Bible said that it was not you who sent me here, but God. He has made me a father to a Pharaoh and lord of all his house and ruler over all the land of Egypt. So when his brothers know what they met and when his brothers met Joseph, Joseph told like this. So all the downs in his life, it is to make him a father to the Pharaoh and Lord of all his house, ruler of all the land of Egypt. Okay, so his life was tough, very tough, but still good. So beyond their expectation, God had been preparing a bigger picture. God, in the case of Joseph and his brother and Jacob, God secured Joseph's life and God transformed all of them, his father, his brothers, and Joseph also, become mature. God showed the miracle, especially Joseph's success, is they never imagined that really beyond, much, much beyond their expectation. And then their surviving solution during the famine, it is also beyond their expectation, but God did it. So we can say that God had been preparing a big picture. So let's remember that the psalm, psalmist confessed that God who fulfilled his purpose for me. 
Let's think about your name. Put your name here. God who fulfills his purpose for your name. God fulfills his purpose for you, for me, for all of us. So next is the after enduring. Next was persevering. Until when and how much will Jesus want me to persevere my life? Until when and how much? Hard to persevere, but persevering our challenges until we see acknowledged God's big picture. Though hard to persevere, we have to do it until we see and acknowledge God's big picture and pray not to be disappointed with our tough reality until we see God's big picture. So if you ask me until when and how much, until we see God's big picture finally after our hardship. The next one is bearing fruits. What will Jesus want me to bear? You know her, right? Uh, she is the Olympic gold medalist Hedel in the ass. She expressed a most gratitude to God and her supporters after becoming the first Filipino to win a gold medal in Olympic. Many people envy her achievement and her rewards. However, we have to remember that in 2008, she was the second to the last, but she did not give up at the moment. She continued, continued, and finally, 2020 and 21, she got gold medal. So people usually forget about her uh, previous priors and failure, but how hard to keep going on. And then I want you to look at her hands to win the gold medal. She has to practice and train herself a lot. So pe when people focus on her achievement and rewards, we have to imagine her effort and her hardship until she win the gold medal. God has perfect timing, never early, never late. It takes a little patience and it takes a lot of faith, but it's worth to wait. So I quote this one uh, to express that until when and how much we have to persevere. Okay, so and then we have to think about until we bear the fruits, how much we have to endure. So bearing fruits. We do not know what comes next to us after our current situation. The Bible teaches us that Jesus allows our core to be attached to our Jesus Christ. And he tells us to love one another. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friend. You are my friend if you do what I command you. No longer do I call you servant, for the servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends, for all that I have heard from my father I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should abide. So that Whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. This is the thing I command you so that you will love one another. So what to bear? That is love. We have to endure our hardship. We have to persevere our hardship until we see God's big picture. And then after that, we have to bear love. We would want to achieve many personal goals. Among them, love should be our first and foremost fruit. As Jesus loved us first, let's love others first. So do not fear. In the middle of our covenantal joy journey, 
we might face the several challenges and hardship that make us doubt God's promise and force us to stop our steps. Nevertheless, do not fear. If you are carrying God's promise, you should remember the end of your story is achievement, not the struggle. Though you struggle now, do not worry. Your end will be the achievement. I'm the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. John chapter 15, verse 5. Of course, hardship, hard to endure. Of course, hard to persevere. And then hard to bear fruits. However, let's trust in John chapter 15, verse 5. If we are in him and if he is in us, we can bear much fruit. So Genesis conclusion, as we finish reading Paul Genesis, my conclusion is the same with Jacob's life. Who is God? Ja According to Jacob's confession, God is his prize keeper. God is a good shepherd. God is almighty God. He proved it in his life. And then like Jacob, I also want to say that God is a promise keeper. God is a good shepherd. God is almighty God. He proved all these things in my life as we go through all COVID-19 and the struggles. So faith in forward. Though you struggle with your suffering and hardship, that is not end of your life. Endure and persevere until God show you his big picture and bear fruits to love one another. And then your end will be the achievement. God bless you. Keep going on your faith in life. Thank you very much.